Hey Courtney in Graham, North Carolina. Should I call you Court? Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera I'm going to show you how I cut prescription Crizol Alizé lenses for your Gucci 2910 color MIO which is the pink burgundy in the 54 eye size. So let me take everything out of the original packaging that Gucci sends to me and of course you're going to receive the Gucci bag, the little handles with the kissing G and the chains on there, your Gucci case and cleaning cloth, which I'll show you in a little while, the Gucci card of authenticity, so you can register your product with, oops, oh, look at those CIA quick reflexes, I'm telling on myself, your Gucci card of authenticity. You like that, that Matt Bourne reflex speed? And of course, the star of the show, the Gucci 2910. And of course it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the right temple to protect the temples from rubbing together while it's being shipped from Italy. I'm going to take that off and you're going to get all the manufacturer's original packaging and including the two demo lenses, one of which it says Gucci. What a beautiful frame. But let's, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take your demo lenses out. I'm going to put your frame into the tracing element of my edger. Hit the trace button. And the little stylus is going to pop up and it's going to trace the shape of the right lens before moving over and tracing the shape of the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Gucci frame and you will receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. If you're 2020 and you have vision insurance or flex dollars, my receipt has my federal ID tax number so you will get reimbursed for this purchase whether you need prescription lenses or not. But court, you know you need prescription lenses. Those days have sailed of you wearing fashion glasses. You gots to see. And I'm gonna take care of you girl. Okay, in just a moment, your shape is going to pop up here onto the computer. Oh, it's going to tell me I need to use the little blocks. I'm okay with that. So, that is the shape of your lens. Only magnify that green diagram. That is going to be the shape that I end up cutting. Your pupillary distance for your right eye is 29. The computer automatically generates at 32.5, so I'm going to send it down to 29. And we're going to go ahead and get your lenses prepped. Let's come on down here. Now, your right eye reads plus 75 minus 1 at 85, plus 75 minus 1 at 85. I'm going to spin the axis wheel of my Marco 101 lensometer. And let's go ahead and mark this, your right lens. And again, you're going to get all the manufacturer's original packaging so you can verify that these are Essilor brand lenses with Crizol Alizé. So I'm going to take your right lens out of the protective sleeve. It actually comes with a little laminate on the front of the lens to protect the lens while it's being shipped so nothing rubs against the front of that. I'm going to remove that. Let's see, I've already got it on 85. I'm going to spin the power drum to plus zero it out and make sure everything's zeroed perfectly. Okay, put the power drum on plus 75. Put your lens in, rotate it until the sphere power comes in clearly. Find the optical center of your lens, check your astigmatism correction. All that lines up good and I am going to put three dots on your lenses some of which may be too light for you to see so I'm gonna darken these one two and Ocho and we're gonna mark this one the right lens we're gonna do the same thing now for the left lens which reads plus 50 minus 75 at 95 plus 50 minus 75 at 95 Take the lens out of the protective sleeve, pull the plastic protective laminate off the front, put the power drum on plus 50, rotate your lens until the sphere power comes in clearly, find the optical center of your lens which is going to sit directly in front of your pupil, and put three dots on your lenses. Un de Siete. And we're going to mark this one L, which stands for not right, which is just like me. I ain't right either. Oh, did we? Oh, I didn't label the left lens. Plus 50 minus 75. Now, these packets come in both plus cylinder and minus cylinder. Many years ago, they used to put plus cylinder on the front of the lens. Now, everything is on the rear surface, so it is minus. 
and I'm going to take your right lens, put it on the platform of my blocker. Now, this is a block. I like to call it Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need a double-sided adhesive sticker. In fact, I need two of them, one per lens. I hope I have two left. Whew, that was close. I had just have two of these left on this roll. So, the black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick it on the first block. We grab the second block. Now the back side of this has a little silver button. That is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice tonight. The first time being now. I'm going to pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line that up in the, the arm. Now the reason why I put the three red dots on there, I have to orient your lens in, there, in your frame perfectly for you to see your best because of your astigmatism. So this dot in the center is your optical center. I'm going to get this lined up now. This blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. If you were to measure both vertically and horizontally, when you found dead center, that would be where that blue cross is. However, your eye is just inset from there. So I'm going to put that center dot, your optical center, right there inside that. Now the other two dots are lining up on that orange graph. And it tells me that it's oriented in there just perfectly. I'm going to hit the button. The block is going to come down and be applied to your right lens. I'm now going to do the same thing for your left lens. Let's pull the paper away. Make the black side sticky. Get the magnet in there. Now the pupillary distance for your left eye is 28. This is mirrored your right. So it comes out as 29. I'm going to hit this little minus button and this is going to come down in half millimeter increments. 28.5, 28. So again, I'm going to get these dots lined up just perfectly. That's your optical center. Get these other two lined up on this graph and it tells me I'm oriented at the perfect meridian. Hit the button. Now the block is applied to your left lens. Because I'm using the smaller blocks tonight, I need to change these out. Put the smaller ones in there. This is what's going to hold, hold it in place while it is cutting. So I need to put these into the edger. Now this is the edger itself. This is what costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out and buy one, put it on your kitchen counter, and then you can cut glasses at home. You won't need me anymore. But the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material. This wheel in the center is what's going to put the channel, that little valley, is what's going to put the bevel on your lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So now the magnet is going to do its job a second time. I'm going to place it into the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck. I'm going to free bad humor with every pair of glasses sold. But I'm going to wake up the computer. That is the shape of your lens. These are polycarbonate lenses, so I'm going to go with the PC that's there. I do not want to polish your lens. I'm not going to put a bevel on the front surface, the convex surface of the lens. I'm only going to put a bevel on the rear surface, the concave surface. This green arrow is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts. Then the lens is going to move up and it's going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. It's going around tracing that, and it is. It's actually measuring twice to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel for your lens placement. Do you have the best cosmetic fit possible within the frame? And now it's going to move down. The cutting wheel is going to move over from the right to the center, and the lens is going to drop down. Now, if you notice, there is water running in the background. If you see light flickering, it's only there to collect the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, where plastic and high index lenses cut wet. In just a moment, you will hear a grinding sound. That is my teeth because I've had too much coffee today. In just another moment, you'll hear your lens touch down onto the cutting wheel. So your lenses are made from Essilor, which is one of the most premium lens companies available. Essilor's name for polycarbonate is Airwear because they feel that your lenses are as light as air. These are Airwear aspheric. Now polycarbonate itself is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable. Your lenses are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin from overexposure, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. 
So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes that never needs to be reapplied, unlike lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're intense, direct exposure to the sun. Now the other nice thing about your lenses are, they are, the AS stands for aspheric. Aspherical simply means not spherical. A spherical lens is completely round in every direction, especially for hyperopes such as yourself, which is a plus lens. Your lenses are thicker in the center, thinner at the edges. So not only are they 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic, it has a flatter front curvature to fit today's flatter curvature frames. So you're gonna have the best cosmetic fit possible with this. Now you also have Crizol Alizé. Crizol Anti-Glare, it's actually three features in one. It eliminates glare. It especially eliminates glare when driving at night, but particularly driving at night in the rain from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights, stuff like that. Now the second feature, it's an anti-reflection lens. So when someone's looking at you, they're not seeing their reflection in your glasses. Or if someone takes a picture with a flash, you don't see the flash lit up in the lens. Or if you take a selfie, you won't see that lit up in the, in the camera picture also. Now the third feature that I like, the practical side, is it comes with the industry's hardest scratch coating. The machine that applies the anti-glare coating costs nearly $2 million. It takes 24 hours to vaporize seven different coatings onto the lens. And because of the time and the expense that Crizol puts into applying their coating, they give you the industry's best scratch coating to protect their time and investment. Now, if you notice, water has begun spraying on the lens. It's just getting a little bath. That reminds me, I need to take a bath. It is spring after all. Now, that little arm that came out that has a little spinning wheel on the end, something you find on the end of a Dremel tool, that is applying what's known as the safety bevel to the rear surface, the concave surface of the lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. Now in just a moment, your lens will be done. I will take it out, but first I am going to open this door with my mind. No, 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 no. Did you like that? Did you like that? I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. It just takes a couple hours, but I can do it. I just have to stare at it for a couple hours. So I'm going to use my thumbnail and make sure that all the optical sawdust is removed from the edge of your lens. I'm going to take my little Phillips head screwdriver, do the old lefty loosey, turn the frame around, tuck your lens in, and then a righty tidy. Hang on, hang on. Gonna make sure everything's perfect. There we go. That's cinched up very nicely, so we can go ahead and start cutting the left lens. Put the left lens into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby. Can I call you Charlie? Flip that over to L, which is not right. Hit start. And just like before, the door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses. Again, making sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's tracing and going all the way around. And as always, measuring twice, measure twice, cut once. But it's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel so you have the best cosmetic fit possible inside your frame. How about that? No edge thickness whatsoever. Part of that is because they are aspheric lenses. Now, when you buy glasses from people online, they charge you for plastic lenses. Then when you want to upgrade to the thinner, lighter weight, unbreakable, bulletproof lenses, they charge you an upgrade fee for that. And then when you want to move to the aspheric lenses, they charge you a third upgrade fee. So this is someone else's top tier premium lens that you get for free simply by buying glasses from me. Now I'm going to put this back in my Marco 101 lensometer. I'm going to darken your optical center. Hope I'm not missing any of this. I'm going to spin the axis wheel back to 85. Put the lens in. Read the power. And I am getting plus 75. 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 75. Now the unit of measurement we use in the optical world, and Courtney, forgive me, but some people are seeing this for the first time, Courtney happens to work for Dr. Shade at the Walmart Vision Center on Mebane Oaks Road in Mebane, North Carolina. She works the front end, does the workups, the auto refractor, the insurance billing, but I'm sure you know that the unit of measurement we use is called a diopter. It's spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. I'm not spelling that for you, Court. I'm spelling it for everyone else. 
It starts at zero, which we in the business call Plano. Everyone else in Texas calls that a city. But it starts at zero and goes up in quarter increments from there, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one, and so on. You need three steps of correction for your nearsightedness. You are farsighted. Without your glasses on, everything is actually much too small. So when you put your glasses on, it magnifies three steps. Now, once it's the correct size, you have four steps of astigmatism correction. You have one curve going this way on your eye, which is plus 75. You have the second curve going this way, which is a minus one. This first number makes everything the correct size. Astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. It is the fine-tune knob. In fact, this is what causes you to squint. You're changing the shape of your eye. Everyone freaks out over the word astigmatism. It literally just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. You don't freak out when you hear that. So that's the fine-tune knob. We're going to turn that fine-tune knob to 85. But first, let's go ahead and check the second curve, the minus 1. And we end up with a final value of minus a quarter. One tick mark packs zero. You remember high school algebra where you subtract unlike signs? Don't worry, I've forgotten high school algebra too. Let's use today's terms. If you had 75 cents and someone borrowed a dollar from you, you would be 25 cents in the red. That's where we're at, 25 cents into the red. You were in the black three steps. Drop down four steps into the red. So we're gonna turn that fine two knob to 85. Now a straight line with a blue cap on my pen is at zero. We're gonna turn that fine two knob past 90, actually 180 over here, 270 for those keeping score at home. We're going to turn that knob and stop just shy of 90 at 85. Your left eye, you only need two steps for nearsighted correction, and you only need three steps of astigmatism correction, so we're going to end up again. You start at 50 cents, you let someone borrow 75 cents, you're still going to end up at negative 25 at the final value, but we're going to turn that knob to 95. We're going to pass the 90th meridian, go to 95. Do you like that better without the cap on there? Now, if you missed any of this, let me recap. Oh, I know that was bad, but you'll be telling it tomorrow. Don't pretend you don't like that joke. You know you do. Okay, so these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180, and it really doesn't mean much to you. In fact, these first two numbers may not mean much to you. They mean something to me. So... And of course, your frame and lens, the Gucci 2910 and the 54 eye size, it comes in four colors. You pick the pink burgundy, sells for $329. You get a free pair of prescription lenses. You paid $60 to upgrade to Crizal Alizé, and your final bill was $389. Your left lens is done. Let me take that out of the Chuck. Thank you, Chucky. Chucky baby. Can I call you Chucky baby? What I do with your frame? I've already lost it. Okay, so let's go back down here. Lefty Lucy. Tuck the lens in. Pop that in there there. Righty tidy. Do you speak Spanish? That was Spanish by the way. Righty tidy. And let me use my pen to darken your optical center again. Again, let me recap. Oh, you thought I was done with that joke. No. All right, spin the axis wheel to 95, that fine two knob for your astigmatism correction. But first, I'm going to check the spherical component of your prescription, and we're at plus 50. We're exactly halfway between 0 and 1. That's where you would find 0.5. You have three steps of astigmatism correction, and so we end up at minus a quarter. So that is made perfectly. I couldn't have done any better if I made these myself. Now, your pupillary distance, 29 and 28, is 57. I'm going to turn the card over, place the PD stick against my thumb, place the zero against my thumb on your right lens, and then we measure we're getting 57, so that is made perfectly. And where am I going to do here? Oh, this is the point in every video that while I clean the lenses, and of course free shipping anywhere in the United States, but when I clean, after cleaning the lenses, I explain that when you get these in the mail, and of course I'm getting redundant, the Department of Redundancy Department, but uh, it's free shipping anywhere in the United States. But when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit either too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is gonna sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm gonna get these in standard alignment first. 
also known as the three point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. And when I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I press down on mine, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. Let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing, yo. So I flip them over, press down. There is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and they're not askew in any way. Check the tension on each spring hinge. That is perfect. Now, of course, like I said, you're getting all the accoutrements, the Gucci bag made in Florence, Italy. That's where I honeymooned in Florence. Of course, the Italians call it Florenze. And this is your Gucci case, your Gucci cleaning cloth. I also provide instructions on how to care for your not only your eyeglasses, but your case and cleaning cloth so it will last you for years. I also include a selfie request to have your picture on the website. Now this is your case. It got run over by a truck. I hope that's okay. You don't mind that, do you? No, actually, they figured out how to make nicer eyeglass cases. They haven't cured cancer yet, but they have cute little cases. So this door is flat in case you have a clutch purse or you want to keep it in your pocket when you need it. It unsnaps, opens up, folds out. And of course it has the same pattern on the inside, the kissing G's on the chain. You have that logo on the inside. You may not see that in the felt. But this will fit inside the case and then of course it snaps shut for extra protection and when you don't need it it will fold back down again oh yeah i love the smell of this italian leather i wish there was smell a vision so you could smell that too so that's that if anyone has any questions about what i can or can't do just email me at free prescription lenses at gmail.com Courtney in Graham, North Carolina. I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut prescription lenses with Crizal Alize for your Gucci 2910 color MIO in the 54 eye size. Of course, every Gucci is made in Italy. And hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.